Great. All right, so welcome, class of 2023, uh, students and parents, to our countdown to campus. We are fortunate to have uh, some staff members here today to answer some of your questions. Um, we'll start off with a few introductions, so briefly to introduce myself, I'm Steffi Sankarat. I'm actually a recent grad of WPI as of this year, um, and I'll be moderating our discussion today. Hi everyone, I'm Jessie Karner, I'm the Assistant Director of Academic Advising. Hi everybody, I'm Emily Perlow, I'm Assistant Dean of Students. Good afternoon, my name is Casey Wall, I'm Assistant Dean of Students and Director of Residential Services, and I use pronouns she, her, hers. Perfect. All right, so our first question is for Jesse. So this is about course registration. Um, I wasn't able to register for my preferred times for a few classes. If I'm on a wait list, how likely is it that I'll be added to the class and when would that happen? Sure, so it's totally okay to be on a wait list right now. What I will say is that there are no classes that are full in every section um, for the typical first year classes. So for physics or math or chemistry, you should look for other sections that you could be registered for and you can still be in your waitlisted sections on the wait list. And if you get into that section, you can drop um, the one that you do not want. Wait lists will start rolling in late July and you'll have get an email to your WPI email account saying that you've been offered a spot in the class and you'll have about 72 hours um, to go online to BannerWeb and accept that spot. So please be checking your WPI e uh, email address regularly to get that information. Perfect. Perfect, thank you. All right, so the next question is for Casey um, about housing. Mm -hmm. So if I've made a group of one for housing selection, what will happen? So plenty of students make a group of one. That means they'd like to select themselves. Um, there are two different things that can occur there. You can look to select into a single, which is rather difficult to do as our number of singles on campus for first year students is quite limited. Um, or you can select a space in an open room. It might be a triple, a double, a quad. And then other students in smaller groups, maybe twos, another one, etc., will pick in to fill that space. Um, something important to note is that through that part of the process, how you've answered your lifestyle questions will not be available to the others picking in or if you are picking into a space others have already selected. Thank you. All right, the next question is for Emily. Um, so this is about clubs. I'm trying to decide what clubs to join and are all clubs open to everyone and when could I join them? These are great questions. So we have over 225 clubs. Uh, students can take a look at that full list on the student activities website and they can start to think about the clubs that they're interested in. We do find that some students uh, get to WPI and they try some things they've never tried before. So we really encourage students to uh, sign up for the clubs or express interest in clubs that maybe they haven't done before and they're interested in. Uh, all of our clubs are uh, open for students to pursue membership. Some of our clubs will have auditions or uh, a membership selection process of some sort, but every Everyone is, is able to pursue membership in those organizations. Okay. We're going to have an activities fair during mm -hmm. new student orientation and every club and organization will set up a table and have information about how to join and what their club activities are. So make sure you don't miss that during NSO. Perfect. Thank you. All right, back to Jesse. Um, I won't know the results of my AP exams until after course selection is over. I feel like I need to know these before I choose my classes. So what do you advise on that? Absolutely. AP exams are going to come out in late June, early July, and we know that course registration closes on June 26th at 11.59 p.m. We recommend that you assume you got credit for any AP exam that you've taken at this point, and then that way um, we can help you to adjust your schedule if you don't get the credit you were anticipating, but we want you to assume that you did get that credit so that you can build a schedule that is most likely what you're going to need. Perfect. All right, question for Casey. Um, this is actually from a parent, not a student. Mm -hmm. So my child really wants a single. How likely are they to receive that? So as I mentioned earlier, um, singles are very highly coveted and also very difficult to um, end up in on our campus. So something important to note is about 95% of our first year housing is in triples and quads. So doubles themselves are actually an even smaller commodity and then singles um, are sort of third on that list. Um, a single um, is likely, more likely if you're looking to select in founders into a suite um, and then we have a smattering of singles in the other residence halls but again it's a very slim chance. Um, highly select or I highly recommend selecting into a space where you might have someone else join you um, if you're a group of one. Perfect. Alright so this next one is for Emily um, for move-in. 
So can I ship some of my things to WPI before I move in? Yes. Students may ship items, especially if you're coming from afar and maybe you're able to, to just check a suitcase or a couple mm -hmm. suitcases. Students can absolutely ship things. We're going to encourage you to log on to BannerWeb and to find your box number. And so when you mail something to WPI, you're going to send it to yourself with your name and your WPI box number. If you're having trouble finding that, you can always call Mail Services and they can help you figure out how to find that information on BannerWeb. We're actually undergoing right now a mailroom renovation which is pretty cool. We're pretty excited. We're going to have package lockers that will let students pick up packages uh, whenever the Campus Center is open. Um, because of that renovation, we're asking folks to mail their packages as close as possible to move in. Uh, it's just to make sure that we've got the appropriate storage available to receive that, but we will take a package anytime this summer. Perfect. Um, I actually have a quick follow-up to that. Um, how long will they hold packages for students? So for uh, new students, they're going to hold them uh, until, move until, they, until move in. Perfect. Day, so. Great. All right. So um, this is for Casey. Mm -hmm. When I arrive on campus, uh, when and where am I going to get my ID card? Sure. So um, first year student IDs are often given out if you're residential um, through the residential check-in process, which I believe I'll be speaking on um, a little bit later. <laughs> um, so there's that option. Um, and then for commuting students, you would have the opportunity to pick up your new student ID um, from the residential services office, as we're the ones that print the IDs. Um, or you can work with your um, CA through NSO to find out if you can get it um, during off time with them. Um, and they are a great resource to help you with that. Perfect. Um, something I would just add too is if you haven't submitted your photo through your housing application or you're a commuting student and you haven't um, yet done the submitting of the photo, we will be printing IDs on the Sunday of uh, first year student move in at residential services so you can just come down and have your photo taken and your ID printed then. Great, thank you. All right, so this is a bit of a loaded question about move in day. Mm -hmm. um, so this is for both Casey and Emily. Um, what does move-in day look like? Do we have a time window for when we can move in? Uh, when do activities start? And is there a parent orientation? So I'll let you take that. You want to take the first one I'll question as a time. Sure. So the um, move-in day starts at 8:30 in the morning. But the thing that's important to note is it is broken down by residence hall and actually what floor in each residence hall um, you can move in. This is to alleviate traffic and to actually have your move-in process be even smoother, less wait time. Um, so you will be receiving communication when you get your housing confirmation email in July that specifically outlines what time each residence hall and which floor within each residence hall can move into campus. The window of time for move-in is 8.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. but again that is very broken down depending on where you are living on campus. Um, it's very busy that time of day um, with move-in um, and we have found that a lot of folks end up sitting um, in their cars for quite some time so we're trying to help traffic flow um, and help move along. When you do arrive to campus to move in in. You're greeted by our welcome crew, which is made up of our um, students that are participating in fraternity and sorority life, as well as a number of our student organizations that Emily previously spoke about. And they will literally move your items for you from the car <laughs> to your room. You barely need to lift a finger. In about three minutes. Yeah, it'll be <laughs> gone. gone. So what we do ask is that you label your belongings. So if you know you're bringing a couple suitcases, a couple boxes, your TV, just use some masking tape, write your last name, your room number, and which residence hall you're in. And it's important to include which residence hall um, so that your items make it to the right room. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times we get confused and, you know, a Daniels 305 will end up in Morgan 305. And we do track the things down, but if you can include the residence hall, the room number, and your name, that is most helpful. Perfect. All right, so in addition to getting your belongings into your residence hall room, getting unpacked, letting your parent make your bed for you, um, we're, uh, we also offer a number of different sessions during that day. So lots of offices will be open, so you could check in. Let's say you had a question on your schedule or you have some questions about your ID, you'll be able to check in with those offices. Uh, we have some sessions specifically for parents. Mm -hmm. So we'll have uh, some sessions talking about transitions and, and reviewing some of the resources available for, for parents. So those are generally at uh, uh, 11 and 1 o'clock mm -hmm. and then uh, later in the afternoon we'll have a welcome from President Leshen as well as a barbecue for all families and at that point then we ask families to say goodbye, make a plan for touching base, and uh, we start our full-blown orientation programming for students, Great. which is a wonderful opportunity for you to meet your floor mates and to get to know the campus and the resources available. Mm -hmm. um, and how can people access that schedule for that first day? Great question. So that is on our uh, first year experience website. Uh, hopefully you've surfed there by now because there's a <laughs> wonderful checklist of things that you need to do by certain dates, but if you haven't checked that out yet, please make sure to go there. Great. 
All right, uh, back to Casey. Hope you can shed some light on this. Uh, what do I do if my roommates and I don't get along? Um, so, because we have 95% of the first year class in triples and quads, we are very <laughs> experienced in working through roommate issues. And so, um, I do supervise the entirety of the residential services office, which includes um, three master's level professional staff who then supervise all of the RAs. So the RAs are undergraduate students who live on the floors with the students, and they're your sort of first stop if you're having a roommate issue. Talk to them about the issue you're having, they'll give you some tips, some ideas, they'll offer to mediate. The situation between you and your roommate. Um, they'll work with you on a roommate contract, roommate agreement, so that you know if one roommate is staying up way later and leaving the lights on, they'll help you sort of come up with an agreement of what time the light should be turned off, what time music should be turned off, and so forth. Um, if it escalates and that's not something that is resolving the issue, you can certainly meet with your community director, who is that professional staff member who supervises the RAs, and they'll work with you on potential of a room change, um, different mediation ideas, um, and really work with you on that situation. Um, we do find that the bulk majority of our roommate disagreements are worked through and folks don't move, but in the if the opportunity is there to move and that is the best solution, we, do, we can facilitate that. Casey, would you say that um, it, students who set really good expectations mm -hmm. right from the onset tend to have fewer issues? Yes, that's accurate, and I think um, you know, having that open communication on move-in day makes the most sense. I think the other thing that's challenging is a lot of you are meeting your roommates online through our housing application, through the Facebook page, and so forth, and you might think, you know, in high school, I went to bed at 9 p.m., but when you get to WPI, you might end up going to bed at 1 a.m., and that is your just norm. And so you've sort of built this roommate group off of your behaviors in high school that then may change when you get to college and so it's important to have the ongoing communication as you realize mm -hmm. sort of what your lifestyle will be at WPI. Definitely. Great. All right, so this next one is for Jesse. Mm -hmm. um, what happens after course registration closes on June 26th? Yeah, absolutely. So another reminder, course registration <laughs> closes on June 26th at 11.59 p.m. So if you haven't gone in there and gotten your courses yet, you definitely should start doing that. Um, after course registration closes, that is not the end-all be-all of your academic schedule for A and B term. Our office, the advisors in our office, you all should have gotten an email from your advisor. We will go through and individually review the schedules for every first-year student incoming. We will then contact you if there are any concerns or issues, um, or say you get an AP score back and you didn't get what you were expecting, you can contact us and say, hey, I thought this was happening, it didn't, can you help me to make adjustments? While you can can't work on your schedule at that point, we can. So we're able to adjust things and make things work for you that are a little bit better and more useful for you. Um, and then after that period, if there are still changes that you need to make, you can still make changes at orientation. Um, you'll meet an inside advisor at orientation um, who will also help you that is supervised out of our office and gets all that information. So there's plenty of ways mm -hmm. to fix your schedule if things don't go the way you were hoping they did. Perfect. Um, all right, so this next question is about um, campus jobs. So a lot of people might be looking at federal work study jobs or non-federal work study jobs. Um, so uh, the question specifically is when can I apply for jobs that are not federal work study? Mm -hmm. So this response is from um, the Office of Student Aid and Financial Literacy, but you are welcome to chip in um, if anyone else has advice. But um, they, that office basically advises um, that there will be a job fair right in the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. At that point, students can apply for those jobs um, once they learn sort of what the positions are and what they entail. And if they're really er eager to start looking at those now, they mm -hmm. are on our, available on our website. If you look for um, WPI student employment, you can specify work study or non-work study. Um, and just be sure that when you're looking at the job and the job description that you're looking if it is federal work study or non-federal work study. Um, and uh, look at your financial aid package to see if that's something that you were awarded. Um, does anyone have anything to add on that? The only thing I would add is that um, you know sometimes jobs will be initially posted <laughs> as federal work study required and then um, if all the positions aren't filled then they'll look to hire students who don't have work study. So don't get discouraged right off the bat. If yeah. you see mm -hmm. more work study positions than non-work study, mm -hmm. those will change in you know the first few weeks of school. Yes, yeah. definitely. All right, so um, we have another Res Services question. Uh, when will I know my housing assignment? 
So um, housing selection times will be emailed out at the end of next week, which would be June 28th, which is the mm -hmm. Friday. Um, so the group leader for your group, so if you're a group of one, you're the group leader, or the designated group leader for groups two, three, and four, and five actually in size, um, will receive your selection time. In July, you'll be able to go in based on your date and time and select the housing for your group. And so if all four of us were in a group and I was the group leader, I would be selecting that housing for each of us at our designated time into our bedroom, let's say, in Riley Hall. Um, from there, certainly I can communicate to my group, hey, I picked this room, you know, 304, that's our room. Um, but everyone will receive a housing confirmation email from Residential Services before the end of July with your confirmation email. Um, and that will include the move-in times I spoke about earlier, it will include what meal plan you've selected through the meal plan application, and it will include your room information and your roommate's information. So if you're someone who's selecting as a group of one, that is when you'll receive a confirmation that will state who the roommates are that you are now in with and give you their contact information so that you can start to communicate with them about who's bringing what um, and different items of that nature. Sure. All right, so I do have one more question. Um, before we get to that, is there anything else that maybe is a commonly asked question that we didn't get to or anything like that? Did cover a lot, so. <laughs> All right, if you think of anything. Um, so my last question is uh, if you could provide a piece of advice for our audience um, for the incoming students and parents for moving. Yeah, so um, the piece of advice I would offer is to make sure you set up and are checking your WPI email. So mm -hmm. the way in which WPI will communicate with you is through that email address. And so a lot of you I know have personal emails and that's what you've been using to communicate with admissions. But now that you're an enrolled student, you really need to use your WPI email. Um, that's where your housing information will be emailed to, any correspondence with the registrar, um, the academic advising office, the bursar's office, the dean of students, you name it, that's where they're going to communicate with you. So please Please make sure you set that up. And the other thing I would offer to parents um, is we know you have a lot of questions. Please review our, our websites. There's a wealth of information. And certainly you can always call any office and ask the questions that way. Um, but if you're sort of short on time, the websites do offer a number of sort of the frequently asked questions and those answers. Uh, so I, for students, I really want to advocate that you should be thinking about getting involved. I think some students come to WPI and say that they want to wait and get settled in academically and then think about joining clubs, but we know the research shows us that students who are engaged right from the onset tend to do better academically, tend to manage their time more effectively. So we don't want you to join seven clubs, uh, <laughs> but maybe think about one or maybe two. Um, so definitely check out that activities fair. That's piece number one. Piece number two, I would say, is part of that is putting yourself out there. And that can be a little nerve-wracking. and It's exciting, but it's, it's a little scary. And I think a lot of first-year students are worried right when they come to college that, am I going to make friends? Am I going to find my people? Mm -hmm. And we really want to encourage you to do your best during new student orientation mm -hmm. in those first few weeks to really put yourself out there, even if it means stepping outside of your comfort zone, because you, you, it's important to remember that every other new student is doing the exact same thing. They're also right. nervous, yeah. and they're also <laughs> worrying about making friends. And so you're in the same boat with all these students, so just really put yourself out there. For parents, I really want to advocate that parents join our Facebook page. We have a Facebook page specifically for parents. We post a lot of information there, so it's a good way to sort of pay attention to what's happening on campus, what's the newest news here on campus, and also any upcoming deadlines. So that's a great way to also connect with other parents too. Great. Awesome, and I would just advocate that everyone take some time when you come to campus and ask for help as you need it. Um, it can be a really scary thing to come to campus and ask for help because you don't necessarily feel like anyone else needs the help, but in reality, a lot of people have the same questions that you have, they have the same concerns, so don't be afraid to ask for that help, and our faculty and staff on campus really want to help you thrive and succeed here. So whether it be being behind in a class or feeling overwhelmed in a class, can you should ask your faculty for help. Go to office hours, be a part of that process. Or I'm not really sure I'm in the right classes. Don't be afraid to ask your advisors. Don't be afraid to ask someone at the Student Activities Fair about what clubs they would recommend. We all are here to help you and are excited to have you on campus. Great, all right. So thank you all for all of your questions. Um, a big thank you to our staff experts. Uh, before we um, turn it off, we're gonna quickly, um, give a plug about the Freshman Welcome Series, which is hosted by the Office of Lifetime Engagement. So for incoming freshmen, their families, um, you're invited to uh, sort of meet your classmates, meet your current students, uh, WPI alumni, parents, and staff members at WPI. 
Um, we have welcome events basically all over the U.S. There are 21 locations, and these events are hosted by alumni and parents of WPI, where you'll have the opportunity to find out what's in store for you this fall, um, and so you can check those out and register for those on our website at wpi.edu slash plus freshman welcome. So definitely check those out. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you in August, um, and feel free to comment any questions that you might have remaining, and we'll do our best to get to those. Thank you.